In this video, we're going to take a look at the creation of custom command macros in AutoCAD. If you find yourself doing the same thing over and over again in AutoCAD, you can automate that process by creating a macro. A macro is just basically all of the steps of the particular thing you're wanting to do in one convenient command. Before we can write our macro, there's a few things that we have to know, specifically some symbols that we will need to help us write the macro. The first thing is starting a command with a hyphen. This will give us the command line version of the command. This is important because when writing a macro, you can't really use any dialog boxes. So for example, if I were to type in insert, then press enter, it's going to open up the blocks palette. That's not going to work in a macro. However, if I type in the hyphen or the dash first, then type in insert, you can see that I'm going to get the command line version of that command. So this is what we want to use for any commands that would normally give us a dialog or a ribbon such as the hatch command or the array command. The next thing that we need to know is the semicolon. The semicolon takes the place of enter. So for example, if I were to start the line command and press enter in the macro, I would type L and then the semicolon for the line command. Finally, we have the backslash. The backslash is for user input. So for example, if I wanted to create a macro that created a circle of a certain size, but I wanted to be able to place it anywhere on screen, when the circle command asks me for the center point, I would want to put in the backslash for user input. That way the user could type in a coordinate or click on a point. So now that we know the symbols that we need to create a macro, we first want to map out what it is that we want to do. So I'm going to create a couple of different macros. One of the ones I'm going to create is to just simply create some text in a specific layer with a specific size. In doing so, I'm going to string a couple of commands together. So first of all, I want to set my text layer current. So I'm just going to walk through this first before I create my macro and record all my steps and then I'll actually write the macro. So to begin with, I want to set the text layer current. Normally we would do that by using the drop down list up top, but we need to use the command line version of this. So I'm going to type in dash layer, then enter. Then I'm going to use the set option. So I'm going to type S and enter for set. Then I'm going to type in the name of the layer that I want to be set. In this case, it's going to be text. So I'll type text and enter. Then I will press enter one more time to finish the command. So here you can see what that macro looks like so far. We always start with the caret C caret C to cancel the previous command. Next, I want to start the M text command. So I'll type in M text and press enter. And then it's going to ask me to pick my first corner. So this is an example of user input. So I'm going to put in the backslash when I actually create my macro so that people can put their text box wherever they want. But I'll go ahead and pick a first point here. Then in the command line, I'm going to choose style. So I'll type S then enter for style. Then I'll type in hand. Notice that hand is the last used style. So normally you would press enter probably to do that a little more quickly, but we can't guarantee that hand is going to be the last use style. So we want to actually go ahead and type it in. Then enter. Then I'm going to change my justification on this text. So I'll type J and enter. And I want it to be top left align. So I'll type in TL and enter. Finally, I want to set in my height. So I'll put in H and enter. Then I'll put in my height of 0.125, then enter. Now I'm ready to pick the second point and I am ready to go ahead and type my text. So I've recorded all of those steps and this is what it looks like written out as a macro. So now I can come in and create the custom command for this one. Let's look at one more example first before I create the macro. Something I like to do often is a zoom extents to zoom in on a drawing when I'm done with it. But often I like to zoom out a little bit more. So the way I would do this at the command line then is zoom, then enter. I would choose E and enter for extents. 
And then I want it to zoom out just a little bit. So I'm going to type zoom again and enter. And then I am going to put in 0.9 X for a scale factor. And that will zoom it out to 90%. Notice that I typed zoom each time. That's because it is possible for someone to change the command aliases. So usually Z works for zoom, but just to be safe, I go ahead and type in the entire command. So again, pretty simple one, zoom, enter, zoom again, and then 90% essentially is what we're doing on that one. So then now that we know what we want to do, now it's time to actually go ahead and do these in some command macros. So to begin with, I am going to open up my CUI, my customizable user interface. Then in the lower left corner, I'm going to create a new command. So I'll create a new command here. And there you can see this blank command one that gives me. And I'll start with the zoom one since it's a little easier to do. So I'm just going to call this one zoom extents plus. So I'll select the zoom extents plus and I can see its properties over here on the right. As I mentioned earlier, we always start with the caret C caret C, which is the same as pressing the escape key twice. I can click in here and begin typing in my commands. I mentioned earlier the hyphen for the command line version. In this case, we want to start with an underscore. That's just to separate the cancels from the command itself. So for this one, it was zoom and then enter. So there's my semicolon E and enter for extents. Then we did zoom and enter again and then 0.9 X and enter for that one. And that would be my macro. We'll test it out in just a little bit. Another thing I can do is I can create an icon for it. So if I want to put it on a toolbar or a ribbon or a palette, I could do that. So I'm going to come up top to the button image section and choose an image that I like. I've got several different zooms I can choose from. I can go ahead and choose one of those. I could always press the edit button and make some changes to it as well. I can write in it, I can erase, I can draw and so on. But I'm just going to pick a default icon here for mine to keep it simple. I'll go ahead and apply and that command has been created. Once again, I'll put it somewhere where I can use it in just a little bit. So now let's create the other macro that's a little more difficult. So I'll create another new one and then I'm just going to click twice on this to rename it. And then I'm going to name this one title text. Now with it selected, this is a little more difficult. So I'm going to select the macro box and then I'm going to choose the ellipses button here to open up the larger dialog box here. So if I go back through my steps that I had recorded earlier, the first thing I did was set a layer. So I put in dash layer, then enter to get the command line version. Then I typed S and enter for set. Then I typed text and enter to set the text layer current. Then I had to hit enter one more time to get me out of that command. Next, I started the M text tool. So M text and then enter with a semicolon. Then we used a backslash because we had to click the point on screen where we wanted it to go. Then we put in S and enter for style. And then we typed in hand and enter to set the hand style current. Then J and enter for justification and then TL for top left, and then enter again. Then we did the height, H and enter, and then 0.125 and enter. So that was all of the steps of my macro there. I'll go ahead and click okay. Once again, I can find an icon that works. Uh, I could also create my own if I wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and find an icon that looks like it's text related. Here's the text one. I'll just use that one for now and then click apply. So now I want to actually use these commands. I've got to put them somewhere. I've got to put them on a toolbar or a ribbon. Honestly, the easiest thing is to put it on a palette. So I'm going to click OK and I am going to go to my view tab and the palettes panel and I'm going to open up tool palettes. 
I'm going to right click on one of these tabs and choose a new palette. And I'm just going to name it custom for my custom commands here. Then I'm going to open the CUI up again by typing CUI and enter. Then I'm going to find my commands. So the first one I had was Zoom Extents Plus. I can always type and search that way, but here's Zoom Extents Plus. I'm just going to drag and drop that out there on my palette. We also had title text. So I will find my title text here. And then I'll drag and drop that over here as well. Then I can go ahead and click OK. I find that to be the easiest route because I don't have to worry about updating workspaces or anything like that with toolbars and, and ribbon panels. Okay, so let's try those out. First of all, in this drawing, I'm gonna zoom way in, choose my Zoom Extends Plus, and as you can see, it works perfectly. So it zooms, extends, and then it zooms to 90%. Let's take a look at the title text one. I'm going to open a, another drawing here, and text is my current layer, so to test this out, I'm going to set a different layer, current. Then I'll start my title text tool. And it's waiting for me to specify my first corner here. And then my second corner. And now you can see that it is in the text layer. And it is ready for me to go ahead and type in my title text there. Now it is really small because it's eighth inch tall in this big drawing, but I can zoom in and get a good look at it there. So once more to recap, when you're creating a custom macro, the things you have to remember are that the hyphen will give you the command line version of it, the semicolon takes the place of the enter key, and the backslash is for user input. That concludes this look at creating custom command macros in AutoCAD.